you know, the reciprocity. I have to experience some form of genocide to form an opinion about it. I have this overwhelmingly passionate I, feeling that there, that any life should be protected if I can step in. Right. And where did that come from? I don't know where that comes from. I think it's impossible to avoid not observing rules in any part of your life. Uh, Stravinsky, who is a huge influence on me, always said that he felt most free when he had rules in his own life. I think that if there are rules, at some point, no matter what anyone says, we end up adopting them as our own. So I don't really know if I believe in externally imposed rules. Um, so I had a question. Um, what is the Christian view of homosexuality? Um, there three, there's three parts of, three things that Christians say, I think, that have to do with homosexuality. Um, first of all, the Good Samaritan parable um, and the very model of Jesus dying for uh, people who were opposing him means that all Christians are duty-bound to love and serve their neighbors, regardless of their beliefs, regardless of whether they're people of other faiths, people with different uh, views of sexuality. We, we are supposed to make this city a great place for everybody to live in regardless of their beliefs. That's, the, that's important. In other words, we have to love people regardless of where they are on that you know, spectrum of belief. Secondly, uh, the gospel of, of Christianity, which is that you're saved not by good doctrine, not by your good works, but by sheer unmerited grace, it pulls out the self-righteousness and the superiority that tends to go along with religious belief, which uh, has actually made a lot of gay people suffer. A lot of gay people have suffered under that kind of attitude, and I think the gospel takes that away from us, and that is good for gay people. Thirdly, uh, when the Bible tells us something about how we should live, like sex, money, power, it always does it like this. It says, God created us, and therefore God in his word in the Bible is giving you directions for how you should live in accord with your own design. It's not busy work. It's like when the owner's manual comes to a car, it says, change the oil every so many thousand miles. It's not busy work. It's saying that's how the car was designed. You know, if you, uh, if you violate that, you're actually hurting the car. So the Bible does say uh, sex is for a man and a woman inside marriage to nurture love and commitment in a long-term permanent relationship of marriage, which means polygamy, it means sex outside marriage, and it means homosexuality are considered violations of God's will, but also uh, violations of our own design. So the Bible is actually saying you're missing out if you do those things. So the Christian view of homosexuality is you're going against your own design and you're actually missing out on God's best for you. I believe there's some rules or stories that uh, basically object or uh, think that homosexuality is a sin. I think that might be a rule in spirit was trying to be helpful, but I think played out in contemporary society can be very problematic. Uh, more problematic in the sense that because it's stated in the Bible, discussion ends about it. It's just that's what the Bible says. And I think that is the more damaging dynamic that results um, from Bible rules, I would say. Let me make a proposal. One of the problems I think that we often run into is that we, from the outside, that is if you're not a kind of an inside Christian believer, it's a little hard to understand how rules actually function inside Christian faith. They actually don't operate the same way that rules and morals operate in other philosophical systems and religious systems like this. Traditional religion says, if I obey the rules, then God accepts me. Whereas Christianity says that because I believe in Christ who has done everything for me, he's died in my place and so on, I'm accepted and therefore I obey the rules. Okay, so one approach is I obey the rules, then God accepts me. The Christian idea is, uh, even though I, you know, I'm not good enough, God has saved me, he's forgiven me through Jesus, and therefore I'm accepted, and then I obey the rules. God accepts me because of Jesus when I believe in him, and then I obey the rules. Now think about this, how different this is. Two people, a religious person in this sense, and a Christian, could be sitting there next to each other. They both could be giving their, giving their money to the poor, telling the truth, you know, raising their children, doing this, but for totally different reasons. 
because the religious person is doing it largely in order to get something from God and also if he's doing it he feels pretty good about it like hey I'm a pretty good person a Christian person is doing it just to find a way to love the God who saved him and so for Christians the rules is not at the center uh, for a more traditional religious person the rules are the center it's what makes me what I am uh, to me, that, the dif that difference is enormous. I wouldn't even be a minister if I didn't believe in that difference. And I do everything I can to pull people off of the, the first approach to rules into the second approach. Now, does th is that clarifying to you? Does that help in any way? Just yeah. throw out something that to help me understand. I'm trying to understand the dichotomy that you presented. It, in, in a sense, what I'm hearing is acceptance of Jesus and, and God mm -hmm. within the Christian paradigm that you've articulated is tantamount to the love that a child, a parent has for the child. It's unconditional. It's just there. The child doesn't have to work through its lifetime to earn it. It's right. just there right. versus a love that a friend could have for another friend where in some senses you have to earn it. You can fall in and out of it, yes. but it's just there. It's done. And then the idea is if that's the mentality, the mindset, the space, the actions will follow. True. Accordingly, but you just never lose that. It's just right. there. Occasionally, God okay. is called a friend, but usually he's called father. So. I can understand that. I don't like rules where I'm just told to do something um, because. So, like, I, I actually experienced this, experienced this a lot growing up where, say, my parents would be like, do this. Like, they, they would order me to, like, you have to go clean your room. I, I would say, why? Because I said so. And that kind of circular reasoning for me just it doesn't hit home. I really need a logical prog a reason for doing this. Like, if they had explained the reason why I should clean my room, like, okay, well, it's more hygienic, it's a good habit to develop if you ever wanted a girlfriend or anything, you're gonna need a clean room. Um, all those things, like, the meaning behind it is important to me. I think at one point in my life, I was much more stubborn uh, also at acknowledging the need for rules. I hated being told to do something, but I think at this point in my life, I've come to shed that uh, stubborn shell that I've, I developed over time. So I, I do think a level of rules and some rules are needed and are good, but it, it just depends on the context of the rule. Let me wrap up like this, maybe to help you understand how I see rules working in a Christian life. When I was falling in love with my wife, Kathy, um, I just, I actually did research. I talked to her friends. I did everything I could to find out what she liked and what she didn't like. And then I did it or didn't do it. And when I look back on it, that was obviously, I was making all these changes and people saw that, but it was love and it didn't even feel like obedience. And uh, if you already love somebody and you feel loved, then you want to please them. And uh, in a sense, you're making changes, but they don't even, it doesn't even feel like rules. It's just, it's just an instrument for pleasing the loved one. Now, that's how it starts. Having been married a long time, I want you to know that um, as you get out into the middle of marriage and you're limiting yourself, you know, you're trying to please the other person, it gets really hard unless the other person also limits herself, unless she's doing the very, very same thing. And then if you have 30 or 35 years of it, it can be a wonderful, wonderful kind of deep relationship that would never be gotten to otherwise unless you had given up the right to live as you wanted and limited yourself to the other person. Um, I think that's how it works with God, especially when you consider we don't just limit ourselves for God, but God actually made sacrifices for us. Only, only Christianity says that God became human, he went to the cross. So uh, if I was giving to my wife and she never gave to me, it wouldn't work. If you give to God without having a God who actually has given to you, it wouldn't work. But in the Christian God, you've got somebody like that. Uh, you are great conversation partners, and I'm looking forward to the next time, which won't be too long. And thank you very much for being here and participating. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Rune Solomon의 창세기 강의가 방송됩니다.